five ways that you can set the mood for your game of D&D. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. Today, well actually tonight, I'm going to discuss something that is an often overlooked and ignored topic when talking about preparing or running a game of D&D. And that is some easy and effective ways in which you can set the mood that is conducive to good gameplay. I spend a lot of time and effort trying to teach you guys ways to build cool things for your game. And I can only assume that you guys spend a lot of time and effort making those things. It's a real shame if all of that effort is for nothing because people are too busy thinking about the other stuff going on in the room. Before we jump into this video, I just want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor for this video, MiniatureMarket.com. If you need miniatures for your game, getting the right minis for your party, for your monsters, Miniature Market is probably the best place that you can do that. They have a massive collection of miniatures in stock from various suppliers, both pre-painted and unpainted. They are a one-stop shop for all of your miniature needs. MiniatureMarket.com slash BlackMagicCraft. Use that link, the one in the description, so that they know Black Magic Craft sent you their way. I am not going to tell you to go out and create a crazy castle game room with stone walls and an antique table and get, you know, a throne to sit in. This is not what this is about. This list is for anybody and everybody, whether you play in a cool game room or at the dining room table in a basement, sitting around a coffee table on the couch, it doesn't matter. These are things anyone can implement. Number one, have a clean space to play in. This may seem obvious, but I think for a lot of people it isn't. You are going to have a bunch of guests in your home who are going to come and sit for several hours and play a game. It's important that the space that these people are going to play in is clean and tidy. If you have a super messy place, people are going to pay attention to it and they're going to be distracted. If there's piles of stuff everywhere, we're gonna be distracted if the place is absolute utter chaos. So wherever you play, whether it's the dingy basement, the living room, the dining room, the game room, make sure things are tidy before your players arrive. Number two, remove as many distractions as possible. You do not want things disrupting the game, things that will break the attention of the players, things that will break the immersion. So remove them. If you have pets and they're annoying or obnoxious, put them somewhere else. If you have dogs that are rowdy and like to jump up on people, put them in a kennel or another room because if people are trying to role play and get comfortable and get immersed and there's a dog running around, jumping up on people's laps, that's going to break the immersion. If you have a cat who likes to jump up on the table and walk around and knock things over, like I do, put them in another room and close the door. Try to keep them out if you can. On that same note, if you have kids, young kids, try and get childcare for the evening if possible. Send the kids away to grandma, get a babysitter, Whatever you can do, if you can have them somewhere else so you're not sitting there worrying about them. If you're watching a baby monitor and they're getting up every hour and the game has to stop so a kid can be put back to sleep, it's super distracting for the whole group. And any pause or break always takes a long time to recover from. A five minute break in the game because of a distraction could take a good 20, 30 minutes to actually recuperate from in terms of tone and immersion. Don't have the TV going on in the background. If you're there to play a game of D&D or whatever, don't have the hockey game on the in the background. I don't care if it's the Stanley Cup playoffs and your team is in the final game to win the cup, don't have the TV on. 
don't book a game of D&D on that night if there's something that everybody's gonna wanna watch and keep an eye on. It's really distracting if someone is in the kitchen, you know, cooking supper or watching TV in the living room. It may sound harsh, but all of these things will break the immersion and be disruptive. More importantly, all these outside sources can make people feel less comfortable and less inclined to get into the game, especially if you have newer players, people are still getting used to it. If there's other people and other distractions around, that is only going to hinder their willingness and ability to get comfortable and get into the spirit of the game and to role play. So remove whatever distractions you possibly can. Number three, comfortable chairs. If you're gonna expect people to sit there and play for several hours, you have to give them a fairly comfortable chair to sit in. No matter how good the game is, how amazing everything that's happening and exciting it is, if you're just sitting there going, oh man, my butt's so sore, my back's so sore, you're gonna be fidgeting and you're gonna be wanting to get away from the table and for no fault of the game, but simply for the chair. So don't underestimate the importance of comfortable seating. Obviously, going out and buying expensive ergonomic computer chairs for a group of several players is really cost prohibitive. You don't need to do that. You just need to get something that's better than a hard dining room chair or better than a fold-up chair. And there are options. You can go to a place like Ikea and buy the cheapest computer chair they sell. It's not gonna be high quality. It wouldn't be something you'd wanna work in eight hours a day, five days a week. But for people to sit in, you know, a couple hours a night, a couple times a month, they will hold up just fine. The other way you can get comfortable seating on a really tight budget is the used market. Might seem weird to wanna to buy used chairs, but trust me, it's a great way to go. I'm not talking about finding some weirdo and buying their who knows what chair. I'm talking about offices that clear out, that replace hundreds of chairs in their office because it's time for an update and some of them still might be basically brand new and were very expensive chairs when they bought them. So check places like whatever your local online used market is, whether it be Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever, check for used office chairs. You can get them for a steal. You can get $400 chairs for 20 bucks. That's what we have in my game room. One of my players rescued a bunch of really expensive office chairs that his office was getting rid of that I swear no one ever even touched or sat in and he got them for free and they were a big improvement over my previous very uncomfortable chairs. You don't need to spend a lot of money, but it is worth the effort to try to find something that isn't going to break your players' backs and butts. Trust me. Number four, atmosphere. Now we're talking about actually setting the mood. The most important thing you can do that is so easy to implement is dim the lights. Trying to role play a really moody scene in a tavern or a dungeon or a creepy forest, it's hard to really get immersed when there's bright blazing lights on top of you. It just doesn't help. Again, especially for newer groups and newer players, they're gonna feel more on display, more in the spotlight. So dim the lights, bring the lights down low. It will set the mood. It will let people feel a little bit more sheltered and they can be a little bit more comfortable getting into the spirit. And most importantly, dimming those lights sends a signal that, hey guys, it's time for just the casual hangout to end and for the serious game play to start. People will get in the habit to recognize when the lights come down, it's time to focus and pay attention to the game. If you're playing in the middle of summer in the afternoon, close the blinds. Try to make it feel dark and comfortable and a place where people can feel secure to sort of do some things that can be kind of embarrassing for a lot of new players when they're trying to get comfortable role playing. And don't be afraid to set the mood in other ways. Candles are an excellent way to set the mood. Now, I don't recommend that you go and put a whole bunch of wax fire burning candles on your table because chances are you will regret it when someone knocks it over and there's wax on everything. 
but get some LED candles. I mean, they're not the nicest and you probably wouldn't want to put them in your living room, but I got a set of five full-sized LED candles made of real wax. They're actually wax and I paid $10 for them. For the whole set, they smell like vanilla, so th that's kind of a nice touch. They're a bit gimmicky, but they set the mood and they look kind of neat and you don't have to worry about people knocking them over or anything like that or fire, just $10 LED candles. Don't be afraid to light some incense. Might sound crazy, but if you can get your gaming space smelling like an old church or cathedral, it's going to subconsciously get people out of the real world and into the headspace to play the game and role play. Number five, and that's music. A lot of people gravitate towards using music in their game and I think that's a really good idea and it's really important. That little added touch can really seal the deal and be the icing on the cake to an excellent adventure. There's a lot of apps and programs out there that do soundscapes and sound effects and you don't need it. You really, really don't. Trust me, the sound effects of an arrow firing will seem really cool for a couple encounters, then after a while, it's just an added bit of work you have to do. The effect will wear off and it won't really be that good long-term. So I wouldn't bother with it. There's a lot of ambient soundscape mixer type things where you can get the sound of the cave with the water bubbling and crickets and all these things. And I love that idea and that's really cool. But from my experience, that type of really subtle background noise really gets drowned out and lost when there's six loud, possibly drunk adults playing a game. My recommendation is stick simply to music. I found that the best way to implement music in my game is using Spotify. It's a subscription service that I already use anyway for my day-to-day -day listening and it has pretty much the entirety of the world's digital music catalog available at the touch of a button. You can also set up playlists for different settings or encounters. You can have general playlists for exploration, for combat. You can curate elaborate playlists for all these different things. And I think it's important that you do curate these playlists to tailor fit them to your game and your needs. Don't just go, hey, random three hours fantasy music and hit play and hope it works. Find the stuff that's right for your setting. Tailor that music to the adventure because it will all almost become another character in your game. The biggest mistake that I think people make when doing this, however, is by turning to movie soundtracks and video game soundtracks. And I think that is a real dangerous avenue to go down. I believe that if you are crafting a world and a story and an adventure and it's unique and it's yours and then in the background someone hears the theme music from Lord of the Rings or Skyrim, they are instantly going to make that association and they will never associate it with your game. It will make them think about Skyrim or Lord of the Rings and it will break their immersion, at least on some subconscious level. You're much better off curating a music list of actual bands and composers that are appropriate. If your players have not heard this music before, that's even better because then they will associate that music just to your game and your world. And if you have recurring themes, that can be powerful. If you can set up a situation where you have special music for the big bad whenever he shows up, and your players only know that song from your game and that villain, all you gotta do is play that music and they'll realize that it's about to go down. That association is really strong. If you don't wanna go through the hassle of curating lists or you don't know enough bands, you don't know where to start, I'm gonna make the playlist that I use on Spotify available to all of my Patreon supporters. So for those of you that support me on Patreon, there's gonna be links there where you can just click on it. You can steal my playlists or just use them to get some inspiration as to how to put them together. And that's really it guys. That's my top five things to do to set the mood for D&D. Make sure your gaming area is clean. Get rid of as many distractions as possible. Have a comfortable place for people to sit. 
set the mood a bit with lighting, and get some appropriate music playing. I hope that you guys found this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and leave me a comment below. If you've got some other ways that you like to set the mood for your game, I would love to hear them. Maybe there's another five big things that I didn't even think of. So let me know in the comments section. Thanks to my sponsors, Miniature Market for sponsoring this video. If you need some minis, miniaturemarket.com slash blackmagiccraft. Pick some stuff up there, use that link for your shopping. If you like this video and you love the videos that I make for this community, consider supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Those funds are the number one thing that keeps these videos going and allows me the time to actually make them. So I'd love to see you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Head on over to the page, check out what it's all about. Hope it helps guys. Hope you use it in your game. Cheers. Happy gaming.